Hey guys. So far so good, huh? Pretty awesome show we've got for you guys today. We're moving into the semifinals. Our first match is up against two pretty interesting teams. We have our returning champions, Method Triforce. Give it up for them. Show them some love. All right. I will say this, though. As awesome as it is to see the returning champs on stage battling it out, I'm pretty excited to see our NA underdogs, Panda Global, continue their run in the BlizzCon Finals. And as a small token of our appreciation for you guys, you've been doing a tremendous job keeping things hype, showing the team's love. We've got some prizes for you guys. So make some noise, and we'll have some prizes going down the halls. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Let's chuck some prizes out there. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Keep up the great work and enjoy the show. Let's go! Wow, I am not sure who approved Bajira throwing those out with those giant arms. That could have been a little bit dangerous. I hope everyone in the audience is okay. <laughs> now back to the desk. My name is Rich. I'm going to be your host up here, and I am joined by Vihel and Supatiz to cast all the action, and we got Zico with all the analysis. Now this match, there is no question here that we have an underdog going against a Goliath. The question is, how long can this Cinderella story go on? Zico, Panda Global, what do they have to do to be able to cut down the reigning BlizzCon champions? I want to see more of their uh, Hunter Death Knight Shaman composition. I feel like in Europe that's a very unpopular thing to play. I'm not sure in NA if other teams run that, but in Europe I've almost never seen that. So I think that method uh, would have a, a lack of experience playing against that composition. And I think that that could be maybe one win condition moving forward for Panda Global. So one of the things that we actually did here, we, it, well, a few seconds ago, we heard a few words coming out from Fabs, and he said he wanted to make sure that when he goes into these matches, the team isn't cocky. I will say, behind stage, when, when they actually found out that they were going to be playing against Panda Global, they saw that last series go down, they seemed to be pretty excited about it. I think that they thought Rockets Esport was going to be a tougher matchup for them. It, it was pretty crazy that they ended up on that portion of the bracket after they did go down to that reverse sweep to Method Synergy, now all of a sudden we see bracket where we assumed Rockets Esports would be playing against Method in the semifinals. All of a sudden, Panda Global gets that upset going. Now they find themselves here. What is it about Method? Like, I think the main thing that we have to think about is the fact that they're playing Thunder right now. Like, this is the composition that they've been able to play so many times. Vihal, how do you think that actually goes into our boys over on Panda Global? I mean, Panda Global was able to take down a very successful Thunder Unfortunately, it wasn't Method Triforce's Thunder. Um, but coming off of that victory, it definitely came right down to the last moment, which yes, they did beat it. They didn't beat it by very much. And then now that they have Method Triforce to face off against, I mean, Panda Global really needs to meld together. We saw some uh, few shaky plays here and there uh, throughout that series since it did come down right to the wire. Uh, so we're going to take a look, and ooh, we're going to have a little bit of a surprise. Now on the left side, we are going to be see uh, Blizzo playing that Arms Warrior with Swapsy on that Elemental Shaman with Botar healing it for Method Triforce. Pop right, however, look at that. Rosita Jones is going to be playing that Demon Hunter. Yeah, as... Pauline's back for Demon Hunter. All right. All right, oh. Panda Global, I guess they're going to try something different. Obviously, Method Triforce had time to observe and see what Panda Global did. So they're going to mix it up a bit by Rosita switching to Demon Hunter with this all-in build. Let's see if Panda Global can get in the face of Method Triforce. They are undefeated in this tournament at BlizzCon, not even losing a single game. Can anybody take down the gods? All right, Jellybean's pushing really far in, able to get the trap onto Botar. That was a great trap. However, they're going to turn it back around onto Jellybeans right now. True Shot is popping with that nemesis. They're going to go hard onto Blizzo right now. They've got him behind the pillar. Double stun on to Blizzo with tons of damage coming out, forcing the die by the store. Excellent crowd control going out. They did manage to layer a hex onto Rub Cub. Blizzo barely surviving. Yeah, after that die by the sword is over, Rub Cub just needs to mash that purge button. Go all in for the kill on the Blizzo. Botar getting interrupted. Can they get any crowd control off of that? Jelly Beans is moving over. He gets knocked away. Great play from Swapsy. Jelly Beans is so far away now from Botar. Hit him landing. Crowd control is almost going to be impossible. Rosita landing another interrupt. Blizzo could be in trouble. 
trouble. Botar blinks in. He goes for the bash to try and reverse this. Rosita is dipping low. Can Meta Triforce find the kill? Now the full trap is landed, though. Rubcup gets hexed at the exact same time. Perfect play from Swapsy. That hex is the only thing that kept Lizzo alive at this moment. But they followed up with another burst stage shot. Do they have more crowd control? They need a stun. Can Rosita get over there in time? I don't think they have it. Now Rosita is low. He can easily fall. It's a race to the finish. Botar getting interrupted. Blizzo is low. Jelly Beans is low. Aspect of the Turtle gets traded out. Botar is trying to recover with the Iron Bark. Now a stun onto Botar. Jelly Beans needs to follow this up with a full trap, but I don't think it is available. Now they need the damage. They need the purges. Panda Global have to go all in to get this kill. Cap time lands, and Panda Global take down the gods in game one. Let A be stopped. <laughs> there are some teams. In a moment, like what? Oh, there are some teams that are consistently good. Then there are the teams that ride the hype all the way to the top, and that is Panda Global. NA, if you are at BlizzCon, give them your energy! Ooh. And they did it in NA that fashion, was going all in. Zico, you saw that nemesis. You knew that they were going to try to go for this all-in strategy. This is something that they've been riding all day. What do you think of this decision? Uh, why did they pick Death Knight in the previous years? Were they just trying to make it close? Yeah, I think maybe maybe they're just giving EU a little bit of slack a little bit earlier on. This Demon Hunter from Rosita Jones with the all-in build. Oh my god. This was just crazy damage coming in and beautiful CC setups from Jelly Beans. I really have to commend Jelly Beans on these traps that he keeps landing. He puts down the blinding shot, which uh, is a AoE stun, but you have to walk to the edge to actually get stun. And then Jelly Beans using that knock trap, knocking them into the stun and then setting that up for the trap. Beautiful. Man, that DH making me weak and also Jelly Beans, he just does not miss a single trap. Sid, you didn't even think he had it there. Let's take a look though at some of those key moments and see what Panda Global did to take this one. Yeah, so right away here, we see Botar and Swapsy, both of them caught up in that blinding shot after Jelly Beans just used his knockdown. So if we go ahead and use that clip, uh, roll that clip, we can see Botar getting knocked away there. Beautiful trap right there. And now there's the metamorphosis. Here is the, the, um, the nemesis. All of that damage now being forced into Blizzo. And then here, another beautiful setup. Botar, once again, blinding shot into full trap. And now Rosita Jones is looking for the kill. But Swapsy denies a lot of these purges with that hex, with that off healing. Beautifully done by him, and then Jelly Bean's gonna follow that up. And here, another trap. Blizzo actually moving on top of his healer to try to break him out with some of that clean damage. And fortunately for him, Rob Cup once again with the Cap Totem, bringing it home. Not only the Cap Totem, he also landed a wind shear onto Swapsy. I gotta say, great job by Swapsy. Every single time that Panda Global went very, very offensive. Uh, we saw the Hex coming out on the Rub Cup that exact second, so he couldn't spam Purge. Uh, so great job keeping them alive for uh, the moment, but unfortunately ended up sc scoring a kill, and Method Triforce is now down 0-1. So I briefly touched upon the fact that when I, I actually watching the games a little bit earlier at the beginning of the day, got to watch those first two games behind stage. All the players are back there, get to hear their opinions. One of the guys I was talking to was Botar, and he, he was talking about the fact that for them at this point, Every time that they've gone into a game, they're going to chop it up as a team. They're actually going to talk about which composition they're going to lock in. He felt like at the end of all of these very long conversations where they're looking at every factor, they are going to be locking in Thunder. That's what happened so far in this tournament. But now we see that all in come straight at their face. They get taken out in that first game. This is the first game that they have lost here at BlizzCon at opening week. This is their first loss since last year against Sidhu. So, it, it really is. I, I mean, I mean it, it's, it's crazy to actually see that. I mean, obviously, they start off a little bit shaky in the year in those qualifying cups, but on the BlizzCon main stage, yeah, they were looking absolutely insane. Not only that, Panda Global took the grand off them. It wasn't a, yeah. a counter comp, it wasn't a counter map. They just straight outplayed them in that matchup, and that has to knock their confidence down. You can see, though, that the veterans don't look phased. Uh, you would assume for most teams that it would knock their confidence down, but here they still, still do look relatively calm and collected. Uh, not showing much expression, but that is, if you've ever watched them play before, you'll notice that is how they go about most of their games. And the question that I have, we know that they like to play the Thunder. They played Turbo up on the BlizzCon main stage before, rode that to victory. They've always been very confident with having a Shaman. 
and having that Warrior as their two DPS classes. Zico, do you think after that first game, they may be thinking about switching things up? I think they could be switching that Resto Druid to a Shaman. That would remove a lot of the win condition that Panda Global currently has. And uh, one more interesting thing is going to be the map as well, because what map do you actually want to pick now into Panda Global? Because in the previous matchup, we saw the map pick not really matter that much because they managed to win on Tolveron and all the big maps. So is Method going to repeat the same mistake as Rocket Eclipse, or will they learn from that series and adapt here? They were watching it. So you do know that they were watching it, and Absolutely. they're definitely the type of team to be watching VOD. The question is, were they watching Panda Global VOD? It's no surprise that this is a huge upset. Hmm. It is a surprise that Panda Global is here. Yeah, now Tolveron is going to I be locked in by this. Method. All right, Jelly Beans and Wild Bear, Rosita, Rub Company need to consider their options here. Do they go all in again? It worked uh, against Rockets Esports on this map. Do they keep him on Demon Hunter or do they blind lock the Death Knight? That's what I'm really curious about. Seems like they're going to be sticking to their guns. That all in strategy got them the win there in game one. They're going to go look for it again in game two. And now if you're Method Triforce, I feel like there has to be a lot of compositions actually that could just counter this outright. Something, a melee cleave that trains down the Shaman. There's almost no protection with a Hunter and a Demon Hunter. Well, so maybe a Windwalker Germany. Death Knight. Even. Think back to Germany. If you remember, we were casting that one together, Sid. Yeah, Rep Paladin Warrior even. Something two melee together on that Shaman. I, he's going to go down in less than two minutes, I think. And that was the big thing. We, we actually saw, I believe it was Corky's team, having to work on the fly. They end up breaking out double Demon Hunter. They take the first game off of Method Triforce, and then all of a sudden, Method just goes, okay, we know the damage is coming now. So will an all-in strategy be something that Panda Global can keep on using if they want to be victorious here? If they get this one, they're going to the Grand Finals, representing North America. If not, we will see Method going for that 3 P. Zico, what do you want to see to try to shut down some of that early aggression for Method? Or is, is it just going aggressive, like Sid said, on the Shaman? I think that maybe they either they should switch to a Resto Shaman, uh, and then they won't be uh, so uh, damaged by Rub Cup's purges. But at the same time, they could also just switch to a melee cleave. I feel like none of these teams have really explored the option of running melee cleaves, and they both, uh, Rockets Clips and Method Triforce, both of them have those comps available to them. They can play Warrior Death Knight, which is a very sturdy comp that can outlast these situations as well. I, I think that that could be a very interesting line. The only opinion that we haven't heard right now, we even heard from you guys at home, and we can see a lot of you siding with Method Triforce, just looking at history, but the hell. What do you expect to see coming in from Method Triforce right now? I have no idea at this point. I don't know if they're they're shaken by that first loss because it was it was quite one-sided. I mean, there was a couple moments where uh, Jelly Beans definitely had to use his aspect of the turtle behind that pillar, um, and Method Triforce getting down to the line, and there we go. Okay, wow. all right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. We yeah, we are we are in for a long game on this one. I have a feeling, you know probably the two tankiest casters in the game right now. We do have Swapsy on that Elemental Shaman and Fox playing that Moonkin. Lucky for us, we have two Moonkins on the desk right now. One of them slightly better than the other one. I'm not going to broadcast who's the better one, but we will ask one of those Moonkins a question. Supertease, you've seen Fabs play on the Moonkin quite a few times before. What did you think of the performance coming out from this All-Star? I, I think, yeah, I hope he's improved because I think his win loss was negative on Moonkin towards the qualifying parts of the tournament. I, I think this is a super safe pick, if yeah, anything. Play, but that was pretty much what I was thinking as well. I mean, we, we didn't necessarily see the pressure coming out that we saw out of other Moonkins. I'm thinking of Corky. I'm thinking of some of those guys that really did pioneer what the class looked like throughout Legion. The thing, though, that Fabs undeniably will have is the ability to, to hang out in a very tanky form time and time again. So, Supertease, do you think just being defensive would be enough in a matchup like this? Well, Panda Global to uh, take down Seedu's team at the regional stage that when they were playing their Moonkin composition, basically just sat behind the pillar, waited until deep dampening, and then went all in for a one-shot. And I think as the Hunter team, you have to do that. If the Hunter is in the middle of the map, a Boomkin and an Elemental Shaman will erase him. It's just type, they can open their chat box, type slash delete, and the Hunter is out of the arena. So I really think Jolly Beans needs to be laser focused. So one of the things that I want to ask you, Zico, we actually spent a lot of time talking about this class in particular. And you always said that Balanced Druids play very differently in NA compared to how they play in EU. For everyone watching at home, could you unpack some of the differences? And I, if we assume to see maybe more of the EU strategy coming out here? 
Yeah, I definitely think that the strategy coming out of uh, Method is going to be to, to survive, to outlast. We want to see them uh, just staying back, cloning, and depending on what Panda Global decides to do, if they go for a split strategy, that could be very tough to deal with, and the game could actually uh, even go in Panda Global's favor in dampening. So it's very hard to call uh, beforehand without knowing what Panda Global is going to be doing, but I think that we're going to see a very defensive strategy coming out of Method. They're going to try to stay back. If Swaps is the one free, then he's going to be trying to heal and get uh, get those hexes rolling on the DPS, and if Fabs is the target, uh, then the other way around. Before we move the spotlight off of this balance, Druid, I have one more question for you, Zico, and do you expect anything in particular to come out as far as talents are concerned on Fabs' side? Uh, so the biggest question is, is he going to be running Bash or is he going to be running Solar Beam and Mass Root? Because if you have Master Solar Beam, you get those CC chains, which is typically a pretty offensive option. But if you have that bash, especially in a composition like Double Shaman Munkin, you don't have that many stuns. So the bash could definitely be very key. You can stun up Jelly Beans when he's pushing in for those uh, uh, traps. So we'll have to wait and see, I guess. I love what Rosita Jones is doing here. So basically, Demon Hunters have, let's say, three builds, but more so two. Uh, one is all in, burst damage, low defense. The other one is all defense, low offense. And against uh, slow rot pressure, you're going to go for the defense build. And Rosita Jones is aware of that. He's changed his specialization up completely. And I do expect Panda Global try and dampen this out a bit. Look for some bursty kills with traps later in the game. Uh, they need to try and e explore that option because if Jelly Bean stays too uh, far out, out for too long, he will get erased. On the opposite side, curious to see if Babs is going to be running that Bash or Solar Beam, as Zico said. Solar Beam is offensive, Bash is defensive. We're about to find out. Game two has started. Ooh, Rosita Jones is not playing Big Darkness either, which is a huge deal. Might not be as big of a deal because of the burst in this comp, uh, but we'll have to see if that'll play a difference. All right, so Fabs is playing that bash. He's going to bash up Rosita on that eye beam. Uh, immediate Earthen Shield Totem for Rub Cub. They want to stay aggressive, keep Rosita in front of Fabs' face, dish out some pain. Swaps are getting scatter shot away. So Jelly Beans playing scatter shot. He's going to be using that on the DPS to slow down the pressure. But even with Jelly Beans on the pillar here, he already got blasted down to half. Rosita's going to pull the trigger. Rosita's basically baiting them to attack him with the demonic soul rending build. His attacks life steal. He's basically like a vampire sucking the health from his opponents and he can kind of absorb the hits for his team by playing super aggressive like this. Jelly Beans on the other hand needs to stay very far away and avoid damage. So far so good. Uh, Jelly Beans is avoiding the pressure. I really want to see Rub Cub go for drinks if they're looking for the long game though. Yeah, and Rosita Jones is constantly going to be using that I-Beam so he can get into uh, Metamorphosis, so he is going to leech, like you said. Uh, Swapsy pushing up. Look at this. Jelly Beans just gets constantly, every time he pokes out just for a second, you know, into line of sight, he's constantly going to be hit by both that Moonkin and that Elemental Shaman. Uh, just constant instant damage out of it. Yeah, and Jelly Beans has to be pinned down on the pillar. The map is too big for him to cross. I think Rub Cub and Jelly Beans have good positioning. Overall, Panda Global's positioning is good. It's a, a question of whether or not they can win in dampening. And this matchup is something I've literally never seen, let alone in a tournament setting. So we're going to have to wait and find out. Method Triforce playing a very strong ladder composition with the Moonkin Elemental, whereas Demon Hunter Hunter is very unorthodox. Rosita getting Cyclones. The Cyclones on the I-Beams are going to be very important, denying these metamorphoses. He's in his metamorphosis right now, which gives him self-healing. Now he is no longer. So Fabs did a good job crowd controlling him during that moment. Now Rosita will take full damage and not heal it back so easily. He's going to use Blur during the downtime. Rosita playing very well here. Jelly Beans is trying to retreat away. If he stays out too long, he's going to get a race. Swapsy getting counter pressured. The damage from Panda Global is looking good though so far. Mana basically even. Yeah, and we do have a Stormkeeper coming out from Swapsy right now. Not doing a ton of damage just quite yet with. Uh, we do have Rosita Jones. He is going to be back in that Metamorphosis. He actually has his full Metamorphosis pretty soon, too, so we'll be able to extend this a long time if he needs to. Uh, but look, Swapsy just pushing up, trying to deal some damage to both Rub Cubs and Ooh. Jelly Beans with that spread Incarnation. pressure. Incarnation. Fabs wants to get a kill here. Is Rosita ready for it? He's going to pop Metamorphosis. Swap back to Swapsy. Swapsy jumps away. Rosita in hot pursuit, imprisoning the healer, trying to swap off that Earth Shield as much as possible, get as much burst out. And that Solitude talent is getting Rosita a ton of more pressure. He basically has to carry the team. He's the only one that can can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against these wizards and with that solitude it's boosting his pressure fabs getting a nice cyclone on that metamorphosis and you're constantly looking for that can fabs land these cyclones during metamorphosis oh, jelly. jelly beans now getting bursted he's even on the pillar and he's just getting deleted so jelly beans is hiding for his life and really relying on rosita rosita now in some downtime though with no metamorphosis self-healing gonna be low jelly beans is still low even behind that box rub cub is trying to pick him back up and he spent 
so much mana to recover. They're going to need to start looking for drinks soon if they want to extend this match. Yeah, they do. Look at the mana difference between Botar and Rub Cub. Botar definitely ahead in the matchup so far. Uh, Pap's getting a shock right there. As, uh, Rosita Jones just going to sit on the back of Swaps. He's basically hitting whatever caster is going to push up uh, because it's that scary moment where every single time that Jelly Bean pokes his head out, like we've said over and over, um, it's just going to constantly be chunked down in life. Looks like they're going to switch pillars. Rub Cub doesn't like that positioning for his team. Uh, it means that they're going to have to make a further trek over to get uh, to Rub Cub and Jelly Beans. Looks like they're going to do some damage to Rub Cub this time. We're going to have the Chaos Nova onto Fabs uh, as Rosita Jones is back into that demon form, uh, doing a bunch of damage. Swaps, he's taking a bunch of damage, though. That was a decent pressure, but Rosita got Bash Clone on his I beam once again. Fabs doing that constantly, slow down the self healing and the pressure. Obviously, Rosita gains a lot of damage in Metamorphosis. Now he's not going to have that self healing. They can focus him a bit in the center of the map. Fabs is using Starfall to try and rot the DPS uh, of Jelly Beans and Rub Cub behind the pillar. It's decently positioned, but I don't think he's. He might be playing the move cast. He could get a couple full moons cast on the pillar. Fabs is mostly focusing on instant cast damage. I haven't seen a full moon really attempted. He needs to focus more on burst again this composition because Rosita's self-healing deals with Rot very easily. Incarnation has now been popped. Fabs wants to get aggressive. Jellybean's getting bursted. He feigned death, gets all the dots off, retreats back to the pillar with that disengage. Fabs getting stunned away. Botar with the instant dispel, but slowly and surely, this tanky composition of the Moonkin Elemental is going to burn down Rub Cub's mana. Now Fabs and Swapsy are going to scissor in one player on one side of the pillar, Swapsy on the other. And at this point, really, how is Rub Cub going to escape? I don't think there's going to be any opportunity to get drinks. They go for the desperate play. Rosita goes after Botar, jumps onto him to try and get some counter pressure going, gets him down to about half HP. Jellybeans follows up with an interrupt, really well timed, now into the silence, good crowd control from Panda Global, forcing Botar's hand, has to use the Earth and Shield Totem. With that defense though, he should start to restabilize shortly, and that means that Panda Global need to consider retreating. I, I really like their positioning change where they uh, went offensive onto Botar, and then both Rub Cub and Jellybeans made their way over. That does mean Jellybeans is in the middle and has two casters now. That Ice Fury is going to come out, double cap, stone, uh, Totem on to Botar and Fabs with the with the scatter shot afterwards. They're gonna kick Botar here too, uh, as Jelly Beans is cloned up to stop that damage onto him. He's still holding on to his defensives. Botar gets kicked to the very end of its cast. Rizuda Jones is gonna use that I beam to get back into Metamorphosis. Actually using Blur also, or it may proc from Desperate Instincts as Rizuda Jones is stuck in that route. All right, I like that Rosita Jones is pressuring the healer. He's the most durable person on his team. If he makes the overextension, he wants to absorb the damage for his team. Now, without the cooldowns, though, he retreats away. This is a nice awareness from Rosita Jones with no blur and no ability to activate Metamorphosis. He needs to focus on line of sighting. He's going to pull back, avoid the pressure. Solar Beam onto the entire team from Fabs. Everybody rotting down. Rub Cup pops Ascendance, boosting his area of effect healing, allow him to easily recover. After this recovery, they need to get aggressive. They're going towards Fabs. Fabs Cyclones Rosita away, but that was prior to the metamorphosis. Rosita's going to have 100% uptime with this next meta. Needs to time it well. Who is he going to go after? He's attacking Swapsy for now. Jelly Beans, though, is in the middle of the map. He's a wide-open target for Method Triforce. He's going aggressive. Lands the trap. Gets Cyclone, though. Perfect Cyclone there from Fabs. Denies the healing and prevents some damage during crowd control on his healer. Rosita's going to pull the trigger. Metamorphosis pop. Gets bashed. Not able to follow it up. Great heals from Fabs. Nice win shear, though, from Rub Cup. Rub Cup tried to push out to help his team. He's now going Getting blasted. He's trying to retreat back to the pillar. Botar still getting tra trained down by Rosita. Will Botar get crushed by the pressure of Rosita is the question. Healing Surge after Healing Surge. Those are expensive spells. Mana could start to even out if Rosita can force more Healing Surges. And that's what they need to do because Rub Cub is very low on mana at this point. He does have an Elemental Shaman just sitting right on his back casting. Jelly Beans is going to come back to Rub Cub to get some heals up. Rosita Jones is still out in the middle playing that tanky spec, taking advantage of it. So it does try to get away a little bit. Fabs and Swaps here pushing around on the pillar with Botar out in the middle right now. Uh, Rub Cub trying to do his best of keeping his team offensive, uh, but not going to have very much success with his mana this low. However, they are doing a bunch of damage to Swapsy right now. Uh, the Ice Fury is going to come out. They're not going to want to kick that frost tree on it. Rosita Jones again, that blur, using that blur with the metamorphosis uh, through the I-beam to try to get those leech heals up. Rosita Jones actually trinketing uh, that right there as uh, Lava Grits is going to come out and it looks like they are going to try to find any target possible. At this yeah. point, with 16% dampening and Rub Cub having no mana. Oh, actually, uh, didn't get any mana from that drink. It was really close. Had to gamble for it. Oh, uh, Solar Beam. Well. 
Rosita now using that trinket earlier could cost his team the game. I'm not sure if he even needed to use his trinket. Now he sat through that full stun. He's forced to drop his darkness, but he's not playing big darkness, so it's not going to really protect him. Rubcup's just trying to get a little bit of an edge with it, but zero mana, basically. Oh, no. Trap has been landed. Rubcup's getting bursted. He spent even just a couple of seconds in the open and gets erased by Method Triforce. So he's back there trying to show that that one was just a fluke. They are trying to end this Cinderella story. Now, Zico, we saw a major change in strategy coming out this time from Panda Global. The question is, are they going to be able to win when they are not going all in? I think that Panda Global, uh, they don't really know yet how this matchup plays out perfectly because this was obviously on Tolvern Arena, which is the largest map, the best map that Method can pick for their composition. Uh, this matchup could look very different on a smaller map. I think that Panda Global's best bet is probably to maybe stop in that Death Knight instead of the Demon Hunter, but he could also stick with the Demon Hunter and just rely on a smaller map uh, to try to win there. Let's take a look at the plays that they actually did make on Tolveron Arena, and then we'll try to figure out what we think that they will do moving forward. I know that there were a few plays that you wanted to take a look at. Yeah, so right now, uh, we just got the, an example of why Jelly Beans wasn't going for that trap uh, stun setup that we saw in the previous game. And if you can go ahead and roll the clip right now, I'll explain it. We see right, Jelly Beans right now, he's going in for the trap, but the moment he leaves this pillar, he is so susceptible to Cyclones just like that, or to damage as well. And if he takes too much damage, Rub Cup is just not going to be able to hang on at all. So we do see a nice CC chain. And then here I also want to highlight Botar's positioning. Botar is standing in the far corner because he's playing with two casters. If he plays at the pillar, then he's going to be line of sighting his own uh, teammates. And that way he can actually get help from his teammates. And then here we see a beautiful solar beam, which uh, just applied so much pressure. You can also see the bash right there on Rosita Jones. Fab's doing a ton of damage there. Beautiful shear as well. And that is right before this moment right here. And we see the Shaman stun come in, beautiful burst from Swapsy. He's gonna take down Rub Cup when uh, there's no one left in the tank. Stage, a lot of pressure, and I'm wondering if they just forgot they weren't playing the Big Darkness. It seemed really strange for Rub Cup to opt standing in the middle of the map for a 20% chance to avoid damage as opposed to a 70% chance, so well, the, I, also I wonder the if enemy, that was just miscommunication. There's no tell, like there's no way of telling from looking at a Demon Hunter, even when he drops that Darkness, if it's a big one or not. In that moment when they see it, uh, we saw Method disengage at that point and, and stop, you know, attacking into it. So it's, it's kind a of a game play. It is, definitely yeah, is. Yeah, and I think it could be a good one as well. And even with that big darkness, or the lack of big darkness, rather, in mind, Rosita Jones was kind of the MVP for me in that matchup, Vigo. Yeah, I mean, he was, uh, for his team, definitely. I 100% agree. I, he really was was uh, keeping his team offensive because, like we saw, every time that Jelly Beam poked his head out from behind that pillar, he was down to half health instantly. Uh, so they really need to come back from this loss. You know, it, it definitely went into deep dampening, but I thought they did a great job. They, they uh, you know, probably did their best against that, you know, that is the best map ever for that comp. And so to do that well and actually bring it down, almost scoring a kill on to, to Botar and Swapsy a couple times. Yeah, you also have to give it up to them moving outside of their comfort zone yeah. slightly, changing up the strategy a lot. And it, impressive from Rosita, who we really think of as, as a mage. And it, it's changed so much throughout this tournament. Demon Hunter being really strong for him, also seeing him break out the DK, but Tsukati's one of the big things that I want to talk about because we put so much emphasis on it before we even jumped into the game. The series now knotted up. We talked about that balance, Druid. How did Fabs do in your mind? I think he played out defensively very well and punished the positioning of uh, Rub Cub as soon as they saw it. So it was definitely good awareness. He played to the strengths of the compositions. I didn't really see any major sign of weakness from Fabs. He got nice solar beams as well, focused on surviving. Uh, here we see Ashermane's fall being locked in for Panda Global, and now Method Triforce have to debate what is the best blind pick. I feel like Moonkin Elemental could be counter comp by a few things, most notably, and you know, maybe criticized for this, but Double Demon Hunter with double demonic build, they can just run at Botar, take very minimal damage, and train him into the ground. I don't think Panda Global have that prepared um, that we saw from Method Synergy, but it would be super effective if they do have the option to do it. Uh, and I'm, it's going to depend on what Method Triforce blind lock. Maybe the Thunder Cleave is the safest blind pick. Maybe just a general melee cleave. They're going to have to think this over. And they ran it down to the last seconds of the clock. So I can imagine they're going to do it again. Method Triforce want to play this out. Think about every option rather than rushing too soon. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm kind of a crazy person, but I agree with you. I'd love to see double DH if they do have it at their disposal. I mean, there's just a track record with double DH against this team. We saw Method Triforce drop a game to it in the past. Obviously, the circumstances were a little bit different, but after Columbus, 
after Germany, I don't think there's any doubt that double demon, demon Hunter is a real composition here, especially if you can play that demonic build, the amount of sustained pressure that you can get out, you can really start to rotate with the damage and it's just going to be consistently coming out of basically both of your players. Zika, what do you expect to see coming out in the composition department? I mean, Double Demon Hunter is good for several reasons, but the main thing I'm looking at right now is that since Meta Triforce actually have to lock in their composition first, I'm wondering, are they going to go with the Shaman or are they going to go with the Druid composition? And if they go with the Shaman, Panda Global could actually switch the entire series on his head and bring out Rub Cup's Druid, and that could be very interesting because then all of a sudden, Meta Triforce has to play aggressive, which is something we haven't really seen them do so far in this tournament. They've kind of been relying on going late in the matches, taking it to damage and then relying on both those rest of Druid to try to win the game. And they are going to go ahead and lock in the same composition as in the previous game. Ashman's Fall, a phenomenal map for that as well. So now it's uh, the ball is in Panda Global's court. I, I will actually say that when you look at both of the Method teams that are still in the tournament, Method Triforce and Method Synergy seem to be opposite teams in that regard. Method Triforce wants to play their defensive game. They want to find the weakness. They want to wait for the other team to make, make their mistake and then try to actually jump in and make their plays. But Method Synergy, on the other hand, wants to force the other team's hand to try to create mistakes. So it's interesting to see these two teams play out the game in a very different way. And now we will see Method Triforce maybe trying to go for this slower composition. You can see that they're on Ash Main's fall, but it's going to be Panda Global now sticking to their guns. How do you think this will play out on Ashman's Fall? We've already gotten a taste of this. Honestly, I'm very surprised that they picked Ashman's Fall. I would have liked to see Panda Global pick a very small map uh, like Ruins, like uh, Dalaran, you know. We saw that in the previous years, and that was working out great for them. Ashman's Fall is basically what I would expect Method to actually pick. Yeah, I, I kind of feel it, like, a similar way, but I will say one of the things that you touched upon was the idea of maybe Rub Cub jumping in on the Druid. Sid, how do you think that that would be? I've noticed some, uh, there have been a few times that Rub Cub throughout this tournament has been caught out of form, and that's been happening to a lot of the North American Druids that we have seen. So I almost like seeing him on this healer, Sid. I mean, Druid healer against Elemental Shaman can be really difficult since the Elemental Shaman damage is a little bit unpredictable, happens more consistently, so you're using your Iron Bark at different timings than you would against other specializations. I don't think the Druid would be uh, the best choice for Rub Cub. I was almost considering maybe Paladin. Uh, if he runs the Avenging Crusader talent, then he can go with Rosita at the same time after Botar, and with both of them pressuring him, maybe find a kill earlier on, and maybe Jelly Beans will be able to push out during the Avenging Crusader windows as well. He's going to be sticking to Shaman, which is kind of the middle ground. It's not overly defensive and not overly offensive, but playing here against Method Triforce, if you play the safe game, almost always Method Triforce is going to get ahead in that match. We'll also say, too, I mean, we talk about these guys being comfortable up on stage. We know Jelly Beans is pretty much that hunter, one of the best hunters in the world. We also know Rub Cub really does shine on that Paladin, but you're looking at Rosita Jones right now, and that guy has looked incredible on the Demon Hunter. It's all knotted up. Who is going to be able to take this EU versus NA? We are about to jump in to game number three. All right, so Botar is running a very interesting spec. He's running bottomless depths. He's running a mana-heavy build on that Resto Shaman. His instant healing is much lower, but his overall mana regeneration is going to be higher than Rub Cub. What does that mean? It means Panda Global needs to pressure Botar. If his instant healing is lower and they can get out the effective damage, it will be hard for him to recover. At the same time, with an Elemental Shaman and a Boomkin just blasting you, it's not going to be an easy job to get done. No, it's not. All right, the gates are open. Let's see how they handle this opener. Rosita Jones is just going to get right in there immediately onto Babs with a very late kick onto that Cyclone, stopping it uh, as Rosita Jones again. As I don't believe he's playing the Demonic build. Uh, we'll have to see. No, it looks like he's all in. He's going to be using those Chaos Blades with the Nemesis. This is everything right now uh, as Babs is going to get down to half with a great trap onto Botar right now. They need that follow-up CC if they can. Babs is taking lots of damage. Actually incredible about that. The mind games on this stage are so important. 
the enemy player can't tell what talents you are running until you know you use an ability that that actually shows it. In that case, the second Nemesis was pulled out, they're probably like, uh-oh, this isn't the demonic build. This isn't the long game that they were expecting because you know that Moonkin and Elemental Shaman is going to dampen the hell out of this match. So then being able to turn it on their heads and go all in, such an incredibly smart move. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Like, they're most likely just going to lock in this composition again. And now all of a sudden, Method, who's just so used to being in that driver's seat, are just going to be sitting there scratching their heads going, I have no idea what's going to happen. We saw them sit on this composition throughout the entirety of the series, and every time it looks completely different. But Rub Cub, the MVP with that cap. Um, I, I just got to say, Thank you for bringing up Rob Cub. Rob Cub has come such a long way from being on Frogs in a Pond, getting kicked off his own team because he plays only Holy Paladin, now showing up here against the reigning world champions with that Shaman, doing a phenomenal job, carrying so many games with these Capacitator Totems, time and time again, managed to knock out Rocket's Eclipse because of two games where he had crucial cap Totems, and now, once again, he delivers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We're gonna give these players just a few seconds, but when we return, the question is going to be, are the reigning BlizzCon champions going to be sent home? I would have to say chicken and pasta. Clams and spaghetti. Chicken parmesan. Ooh, that's a hard one. My favorite thing my mom would cook me probably would be uh, chicken fettuccine alfredo. Whenever she makes enchiladas, I, I love that. Honestly, when I go home, it's, it's definitely gotta be pho, like the Vietnamese soup. She makes the best mom spaghetti. She's meatballs, ground beef, oh, it's just so good. So I, I don't know her recipe though. I love a baked potato. I love chicken, barbecue chicken, and just corn. Probably chipotle. Right now, at least. Fried chicken, just like, there's not even like super fried, like greasy chicken, but there's like breaded chicken. It's really good, and she didn't make that often. That or pork chops are pretty good, actually. Sh shaking big pork chops. Absolutely the best, actually. My dad makes like the best hamburgers. <laughs> My mom makes an incredible pasta bake. Um, it's delicious, absolutely insane. Mom, if you're watching this, if you make it, I'll come over.
Me and my team won the past two BlizzCons. We won this year regionals with a Blizzard. I feel like, as I said, is um, is bringing like new motivation to the team because after winning BlizzCon for two years, it's hard to keep the same motivation. My last words to my enemy is try your artist and we'll see who, who wins. The 2017 World of Warcraft Arena World Championship is brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Intel, T-Mobile, and NVIDIA. Everybody take a deep breath because you may have just walked in on history in the making on this BlizzCon stage. My name is Rich Campbell. I'm going to be your host, and I am joined by VHEL, Supertease, and Zico. Yeah, don't feel bad about it. Make some noise for North America because they are just one game away from being able to take this series home and move on to the grand final. The question is, Zico, do you think they could do it, my EU brethren? If you asked me this morning, I would have said, I don't think they're even going to be in the semi. But now, watching them, bringing out this Demon Hunter composition, I really don't know if I can say, no, I don't think Planet Global will make it. I think Planet Global is just going to maybe take it three to one. Who knows? What can yeah. Method actually do? We saw them change their composition, and they lost with it on Ashamans. I mean, if you're just tuning in now, Method Triforce have been undefeated throughout this entire BlizzCon year up until this point. They're the two-time reigning champions of the past two years at BlizzCon. And Panda Global, the underdogs, everybody was expecting them to already be out of the tournament at this point, are putting it to them with pure aggression. So if you haven't told your friends to come hang out here at the stage, the Warcraft stage, or you're at home and you haven't told uh, your friends and family to tune into this, they are missing out on history in the making. Also, if you were one of the people who counted out Rub Cub all year long, I'm sure you're eating your words right now because this man looks like a man possessed up on the stage, making play after play. And now we should be going here to Tiger's Peak. Oh no. All right. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's demo too. I think Method Triforce are no, shaken. No, they're doing it. They're shaken. This is a, I would have never expected them to gone with this composition. I would have almost assumed a melee cleave at least is, if they're gonna switch off and try and out aggro. Playing safe like this against the pressure that Panda Global is putting out. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, and, that's the question. But, and Blizzard pretty much has been the MVP for this team this year. I will say the big difference, you know, bringing them back from almost not even qualifying for regionals, just being really low on the, the point qualifications, you know, going into regionals and then having Blizzo, and then all of a sudden they were just rocketing their way up the, uh, the point totals. Um, so swapping him out for Bob's on demo, I mean, he's an incredible warlock. The, the you know, thing he's been well, around forever. Oh, for sure. I mean, he's one of the most winningest players in World of Warcraft history. But the big thing about Blizzo that you've already mentioned, and one of the reasons he does shine in a matchup like this, is his ability to apply pressure, but also stop goes. It seems like he always has something in the reserves to stop the pressure that a team can put in. And we've already seen just how much pressure this Panda Global team can do. now. Zico, how exactly is this composition that we see Method breaking out here? What does it want to do to try to stop that aggression? It wants to play to the late game. You know, no surprise there for Method. But at the, at the end of the day, you are now playing with a Warlock instead of Boomkin. Warlock is Fabio's main character. Uh, he's going to have more stunts to kind of help his team with. Uh, we saw a similar matchup played against uh, Unitas, where they... Uh, the Warlock of Unitas was actually dropping those stuns on Yelly Beans during the traps, during the crucial moments to try to stop those crowd controls. So we're going to have to see if Fabio can kind of repeat that and, uh, you know, replicate that a lot of times because right now they're with their backs against the wall. Now we see a team that wants to be the aggressor, and I think that's going to be our boys from the NA. Who are they going to try to target here? Supertease, who do you think that their kill target will be? Obviously, so much tanky action going on for Method. Is there one player that you want to see them try to sit on? I mean, the Demonology Warlock is 
probably the most obvious target. Um, we saw against Unitas Black that they focused on killing the Demonology Warlock's pet, and basically the defense that the Warlock has is that he splits some of the damage he takes with his pet. So if you attack the pet and the Warlock, you're basically doubling your effectiveness. If you kill the pet off, he does not get that transfer of damage. And if they can get that strategy going, kill down the Felguard and focus down the Warlock, Fabio is not going to have an easy time. It's a difficult strategy, though, to pull off, especially when you will see some of that micromanagement coming out from one of the best Warlocks in the world. It if he can't bring down that pet, it will actually see that soul link staying up. But if you can bring down the pet and manage to kick the resurrections that the warlock will try to get out, trying to resummon that pet, it will be a whole lot of damage coming in for the warlock. But everyone, give it up one more time. Panda Global, just one game away. Casters, do the honors. Take this one away. All right, yeah, now Fabs is going to be playing an interesting spec. We've talked to a couple of the EU demo warlocks, and sometimes they like playing Master Summoner that gets you those instant dread stalkers. But instead, they have the stun potential with that uh, Fell Lord, the Call Fell Lord, which is going to stun everyone around. That's going to pair very well with the AoE damage from that Elemental Shaman. The gates are going out. Looks like Rosita Jones might be going with that all-in spec. Again, we're going to have to see if he's going to go. The gateway is down right now. They're going to play a the side gateway at this point. They're going to get immediately onto Fabs, which is exactly what we thought. Axe Tun Stoss onto, onto Rub Cup, followed up by the, the... Wow, they went for the stun already, but Rub Cup taking a bunch of damage right from the start. As uh, is going to try to get away as an uh, excellent wind gun. Uh, with the interrupt afterwards, Rub Cup down to half right now. Fabs also is down to half. All that all-in damage uh, from Rosita Jones, just doing a ton of damage. The pressure on Rub Cup is important. That way he has to heal himself rather than purge. Now they're crowd controlling him. They're going after Jelly Beans, who is already down to half HP. Method Triforce are out for vengeance. You do not want to tickle this dragon. If you if, if you make Method angry, man, this is not going to be the team that you're going to get away with it. Falcon's consumption potentially on Jelly Beans. Trinket Exil healing himself back to full. Botar caught into the bursting shot. Full trap landed. Fab's in trouble. His pet has gone down. He gets the resurrection off. The soul link is going to spread out the damage. He's hanging on by a thread. Behind the pillar. Purge after purge. Rub Cup getting knocked away. Fab's getting knocked back in the line of sight. Spirit Link Totem was used there With by the Botar. Was a bit questionable. Now it's not going to be available. And Fab's is in so much trouble. Method face elimination. Panda Global just need to keep going all in. This game is completely in their favor. There's no defenses available for Method Triforce. Fab's pet is going down once again. All right, they're going to have a go in a second now that the Fell Lord is back. We're going to have the uh, the Stormkeeper up as Fabs is getting some heals off finally from Botarts, but he's going to get kicked again. Full trap landed. No trinket available. Jelly Fabs is taking a ton of damage. damage. Oh, darkness gets dropped. Rosita wants to stay aggressive. Triple cap in reverse here landed by Method Triforce. Now Rub Cub on the back foot. His entire team at half. Goes for the ascent. This gets Winchard. Perfect play from Botar. Jelly Beans has to use that aspect of the turtle. Suddenly Panda Global had blown through their entire defensive uh, outline there. And now Fabs sitting up for the kill. Rosita denies the hand of Gildan for a few more seconds. Here comes the Man of Arbizes. They're looking to strike back. Fabs is dangerously low. There's nothing left for nine more seconds. Fabs gates away. Can they keep up with Fabs is the question. Jelly Beans moves over. They land the interrupt. Fabs is in trouble. Well, he's not going to make it out of this. He desperately fears Rosita away. He somehow sees the line. First each shot lands. They need to get the trap. They land a trap. Fabs is barely hanging on this entire game. Down to 10%. Trying to get Triforce is no more. They are going home. NA all ends. The reigning champs for two years in a row sends them packing. Seiko, please tell us what just went down. The reign is over. That's what just went down. We saw some of the most aggressive, phenomenal play come out of Panda Global and take this game down. Jelly Beans came 
came in when it really mattered. He got so many bursting shot traps onto both there's so many setups, and they did not break Rosita Jones, keeping sure that he does not use some of that clean damage that the Demon Hunter has, and make sure that they could take tabs down. So much switches as well to the back. Just awesome, aggressive play coming out of Panda Global, and of course, Rob Cup with the cap capacitator stunts as well. I would say the two things that incredibly impressed me about Panda Global is when we talked to them before opening week, it, they looked shaky. They didn't have the answer for their first matchup, which was at Windwalker DK, but when we were talking to them, they realized that as long as they could make it through that first match, they have an entire week to prepare, knowing all the comps that people are playing. Number two, we saw Jellybeans on stage with Bajira talking about how he's really sad that he can't play his Hunter, that he had to play this alt elemental shaman to stay into it. Look at that. On his marks, Hunter, crushing it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for one of the most impressive reigns we have seen in the history of World of Warcraft Arena. Give it up for Method Triforce. Absolute legends, absolute legends. But now, if you got that feeling, give it up for NA, give it up for Panda Global. Oh, man. NA has made you wait a long time, World of Warcraft fans. This may be the year. Let's hear what the man himself has to say. Rosita Jones is on the floor with Bashira. Hey, thank you so much, Rich. Oh my goodness, what just happened on this stage? Probably the, one of the most insane upsets I've ever seen in my three years being here at BlizzCon with World of Warcraft. So, let's put it in perspective. You guys pulled off probably, like I said, one of the most unexpected you know, come from behind underdog story victories we've ever seen. How did you guys just do that? Mongo. That's it. <laughs> Run it, guy, attack him until he dies. <laughs> well, it worked. It worked. All right, so now that you guys have knocked off probably what was considered to be, you know, the, the favorite team to win BlizzCon, what are your chances? We're going to fucking win. <laughs> even a question that needs to be asked, but you guys do seem to have the crowd on your side. How much of a difference does that make for you guys? It feels so amazing. I've never had a feeling this in my entire life. Like, thank you all so much. I'm like, literally, this is the highlight of my life. Well, take your moment, enjoy. Thank you guys so much for showing our NA team's love. Let's throw it back to Rich and get the second semifinal game going. Let's go. Thank you so much, Bashir. It was so awesome to hear from Rosita Jones. Right now, a member of one of the scariest teams in the entire world. They will be waiting now in the grand final. He said, he said, run at the player until they die, right? Yeah. Run, run at them. That's and a good hit strat. The, you got right. that strat down? Yeah, you, you run write that down. And you write that down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that one so, out, saving that for later when I actually do get home. <laughs> but we have some business to do here. We have one more semifinal match, and then after that, the team that wins will be going to the grand final to face off against Panda Global. An NA team is in the grand final. This is so exciting, but we're going to jump to a quick break. When we return, we're going to see if NA can do it again in our semifinal match.